Praise the Lord. All right, some announcements here. Announcements. Bible conference, Wednesday, January 20 to Friday, January 22. Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Thursday morning, Friday morning. Some of the finest Bible teachers you'll ever hear be right here in our auditorium. We'll uh, fellowship together in between services, after services. There's a sign-up sheet in the lobby for you to help us with meals, with serving of meals, with cleaning, with nursery work, with all the things it takes to make that conference happen. In preparation, there'll be a work day, short work day, easy work day, this coming Saturday, January the 9th. Everyone is invited Come with your best attitude and help us get the building and the grounds all fixed up. Bible school spring semester begins one week from today. Sign up sheets in the lobby. We'll be teaching through the book of Acts. We'll be teaching uh, First and Second Thessalonians verse by verse. And we'll be teaching Bible prophecy from the beginning of the church age to the midpoint of the tribulation. So sign up for those classes. Be glad to have you for that. Youth activity this uh, Friday. Ages 12 and up, Outdoor Adventure with Brother Jake, Saturday, January the 16th, ages 5 through 12. We have a location for that. Yes. Going, up to Dunn's Creek. Going up to Dunn's Creek. All right, so if you uh, sign up for that, that's in the lobby as well. And we need snacks and Capri Sun for the Good News Club. Those will be starting back up this week. What a blessing to be able to teach all those boys and girls about Jesus and we thank, thank the Lord for the open doors of opportunity. Appreciate your prayers. We had a, an excellent little uh, a mini tour through uh, North Carolina and Southern Virginia. Uh, we had services in four churches over the space of nine days. And just just to give you a little idea, um, we were at Box Mountain Baptist Church. I mean, little country church way up in the Carolina hills. And the pastor there... At seven years old, he began to ride a church bus and go to Sunday school and heard the gospel and got saved. And then he was one of the young people in the church. And then he was a worker in the church. And then he was a youth pastor in the church. And now he's the pastor of a church where he got saved because somebody picked him up on a, on a bus on Sunday morning. That's a real blessing, isn't it? His wife was in an accident 18 years ago. Uh, and, uh, and received uh, some real serious trauma from it. And she has seizures about twice a day, sometimes every two hours. And, and so she's got to deal with that. He deals with that. And, and so I would ask you, what's your excuse for not serving God, doing something for God? And uh, they're out on the street. Uh, they got a bulletin board in the lobby of all the different uh, places they go and preach out in public. It's a blessing. And then we went, uh, had a meeting in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and uh, the pastor there, has, uh, he grew up on a dairy farm, and his parents just hard-working uh, people back in the, in the uh, early part of, or the, back in the Depression days, and somebody invited his mother and father to come to church, and he heard the Word of God uh, preached there right over across the county from where he is now. Now he's a pastor of a church with a radio station. The great uh, the church has a radio station, and we're on that station. His wife in very, very advanced stages of Alzheimer's. She's had Alzheimer's for about five or six years now. And uh, they just she she comes to church and and uh, up until about a year ago she they they'd have her get up and sit at the at the organ where she always sat to play and and uh, of course she can't play anymore but they just try to the best to to keep her function as best they can and that's quite a burden for a man to carry a pastor in a church uh, what's your excuse for not not serving God and then. Um, well, Bear Trail Baptist Church, and, and if you ever go to Bear Trail Baptist Church, it'll be on purpose. You, you, you will not ride past Bear Trail Baptist Church. And so I didn't know there was a church here. You got to drive through, don't you try? You got to drive through a front yard, somebody's front yard, to get to the church, which is back behind there. And the, the old building where we used to meet in, uh, they, they replaced that. It was about to, it really was about to fall down. They had it propped up with the. With, uh, Boards and I'm not I'm not kidding. And uh, old days had a wood burning stove right in the middle of the auditorium. All kinds of things you'd never be allowed to do today. But anyway, brother Tim Crotz up here. His daddy was a pastor up there in Mount Airy. He just grew up in church. He said I never been out of church in my life. Never been out in the world. Would know what it was like. That's a blessing, isn't it? 
And uh, so they built a big new building, and then uh, things started growing, taking off, and then the youth pastor decided that he wanted his daughter to be a softball star instead of a uh, Christian, and uh, dropped out of church and still trying to take people out with him. That's how people do, you know. They, they never content just leave a church. They've got to try and destroy it after they, after they go. And uh, so he's got that burden to deal with. Uh, what's your excuse for not serving the Lord? And then we were down at, um, at Gospel Light Baptist Church in Salisbury, and the pastor there, 13-year-old boy, uh, they picked him up to go to vacation Bible school. And he heard about Jesus and got saved in the, in the VBS. Isn't that a blessing? And uh, now he's pastoring a church, out doing street ministry and uh, public ministry. He's got, a, he's got all kind of back problems. And many a day he, gets, uh, he doesn't get up. He can't get up. The days that he can get up, he, he does what he can for the Lord. So everybody's got their burdens and everybody's got their problems. And some people use them as a reason to not serve God. And some people serve God in, in spite of them. We've had good meetings in all those churches. But I just want you to know, there's four men that are pastoring. And, and one of them was a bus kid. And one of them was invited, uh, his parents were invited to church, and he got saved as a young man. And one of them got saved to VBS, Vacation Bible School. And that will encourage you to try and get some little boy, little girl into church and invite some family come to church and hear about Jesus. And 40 years later, they could be pastoring that very work. And uh, what one of them, I can't remember which one, told me, he said, you know, things have changed, things aren't like they used to be. He said, I remember one Sunday morning getting on a bus to go to church, and there were 96 children and two bus workers on that bus. He said, we were sitting too deep with somebody laying across the top, the top level. Out. He said, he said, it just absolutely probably broke every single rule in the book, except God's rule to go out in the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. But uh, those, those must have been amazing uh, times back there in the 70s and 80s when the bus ministries were really... Going, going big. But uh, so anyway, and you see these boys and girls in the hallways and running, carrying on, and making noise and everything else. You ought to love them and pray for them. And and uh, you know we keep them in line best we can. But one of them may end up standing in this pulpit one day, being the being the pastor when I'm dead and gone in heaven, or uh, sooner if he can get enough votes. And uh, <laughs> but uh, God, God uses, God uses bus ministries, vacation Bible schools, invites. He uses all of that. And we, we thank Him for it and rejoice in it. So appreciate you allowing me to go and run up and down the road. I, I really just, the, the, the travel is wearisome, but the blessings of helping the churches are, are tremendous. That the, One of the churches, they, there's a, a, a market, it's an open air market that they have in the summertime in a little town called uh, Hillsdale, Virginia, 150,000 people over the course of, of two weekends and a week in between, come through that little flea market, open air market, and they go there now and set up a booth and witness and have, have people there. And uh, other groups, or other churches, these churches are working parades with gospel tracts and just all kinds of things. And they'll tell you, so we, we never would have done that if we hadn't seen Bible Baptist in the land do it. And, and they just, they all send their thanks to you for setting a good example for them. And we appreciate God and praise the Lord for it. Well, Lord willing, we're going to finish up Nahum tonight. Night. We've got a brutal, Nahum chapter 3 is just brutal. It's like God read the headlines in America and gave his commentary on it. But this morning we're going to turn to James chapter number 4. James chapter number 4, a little uh, happy New Year holiday message for you today. James chapter number 4 and verse 13. James chapter 4 starting at verse 13 Go to now, go to now. If you're from the north, that that your version says, get out of here. If you're from the south, your version says, oh, come on. But the Bible says, go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a uh, city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. It's not a bad plan. Whereas ye know not what should be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For, for that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. 
Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Father, help me this morning. Please help me to tell the truth in the way that you would have it told. And I pray, Father, to everyone that's made the effort to come here this morning, we'd be helped and strengthened. Lord, we know you're able to do that for each of us. We pray you'd find us willing to have it done. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I I don't think it's just my age. I hear young people saying the same thing. Everyone seems to be commenting upon how quickly time seems to be passing. And surely it is. 2015 is gone. We are, we are 15 years f- removed from digging ourselves out from Y2K. We are, we are already three years removed from the destruction of the earth at the end of the Mayan calendar. It is amazing how rapidly time goes by. Some of it seems like just yesterday when Richard Nixon was resigning because he told one lie. Aren't you glad we don't have leaders like that anymore? (laughs) I'm telling you, the days seem to be passing by like the telephone poles alongside the highway as you drive your car down the road. They're just zipping and moving so rapidly, and we ought to make proper plans. This passage doesn't say, do not plan for the future. This passage says you're a fool to plan for the future as though it were guaranteed. And this passage says you are a fool to plan for the future without considering God and your plans. Now, the Lord's really blessed us. We've got a lot to do around here. We've got a Bible school, and we've got evangelistic outreach, and, and we have uh, pre- preaching trips, and we have mission trips, and we have regular church activities. And, and this is the truth. Uh, I, I have... I have Bible school classes planned out and scheduled for four years in advance. My preaching schedule is booked two, two, uh, uh, four years in advance. My preaching schedule is booked two years in advance. We sit down about September and we lay out uh, what, what ball games and bowl games and races and that sort of thing that we're going to travel to as a church to evangelize for the, the entire course of the following year. And, and yet the fact of the matter is we might not get out of bed tomorrow. The fact of the matter is we might not live another month to participate in any of those things. And so everything that we look to as we, as we gaze into an uncertain future, we have to say, if the Lord will, by the grace of God, by the health of, help of God, by the strength of God. Now, I, I don't, I don't want to bring up any, any unpleasant things, but we bring up reality, and I do want to bring up happy things, and thank God that's part of the reality. But as we look back over the year that has gone by, we have sat in this auditorium and sung songs of praise to God after someone has gotten up off their knees who has been saved by trusting Jesus Christ as their Savior and received eternal life. We have departed rapidly from this auditorium to run out to our cars and drive up the road and go up to Lake Diaz and sing songs in public and watch dozens of people follow the Lord and believers' baptism. What a blessing that is. We have stood in this auditorium and, and watched a, a young man with a big smile on his face watch as, a, as, his, the, as his bride walks down the aisle and we've seen them joined in holy matrimony. And we've rejoiced in that and thanked the Lord for it. And we've stood in the same auditorium. And we prayed for people with terrible sicknesses and illnesses and people hospitalized. And and we've wept together with people who have suffered great loss. And we've had had funeral services together. And we've mourned our dead. And listen, if God had told us January 1 of last year, Some of the storms we would sail through and the troubles we would experience, many of us might have quit right then and dropped out on God. But He hadn't called us to walk by sight. He's called us to walk by faith. And He's not going to lay out 2016 for us. He's going to give us this promise, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. But I'm telling you, I I, I know what I hope is going to happen 
this January. I hope we're going to start a great semester of Bible school. I hope we're going to have some wonderful men and women, young people study with us. I hope we're going to see some souls saved. We're going to go out door knocking on Sunday afternoons and street preaching on Friday afternoons and Saturday nights. And we're going to have a wonderful Bible conference. We're already looking forward to the messages and the, the men that are going to come. And, and yet none of that may happen. Or all of it may happen and we won't be a participant. And so what does the Bible say? We ought to consider the reality of the fact that the best laid plans depend on the Lord. And plans that are not sinful, plans that are righteous, and plans that are not wrong, but plans that are very, very good, depend upon God enabling us to stand, to walk, to sit, to eat, to breathe, to think. And so we ought to begin this year with great hopes of serving God. And with, with great certainty that we'll need God. And unwilling to take one step without His leadership and without His blessing. I saw on the way to church this morning, they, they've not changed the sign for the new year. In 2014, 87 people. In Volusia County alone, died in automobile-related traffic accidents. Last year, 2015, 90. 187 people got in a car to go somewhere and never got there. 187 people said, I'll be home at such and such a time, and they never came home. What we ought to say each time we kiss our wife goodbye, each time we bid our husband farewell, we ought to say, Lord willing... Lord willing, I'll see you this evening. Lord willing, I'll be back in an hour. Because we don't know, it's not certain what life was going to bring. It's not certain what the world may bring our way. It's not even certain what God has for us. And sir, you ought to plan to go to such and such a city and provide for your family. You ought to sit down and plan and make certain that you have enough enough uh, income uh, in, in your future to take care of the obligations and responsibilities you've taken on. But when you've done all of that proper planning and careful planning, you ought to get down on your knees and say, God, God, keep me employed. God, keep me able. God, God, help me to do the right thing and provide for my family. What a blessing. All these little babies uh, born and, and the nursery full of babies. And, and, and we got great plans. I'm going to raise my boy for Jesus. I'm going to raise my girl for Jesus. One day my boy's going to do this. One day my little girl's going to do that. Listen, that, that's a lot better than not caring. That's a lot better than just turn them over to somebody else and, and, and forgetting you even had children. There's a lot of that goes on in our society. But you ought to say, God, if you'll help me. I'll stay in church, I'll stay true to the Bible, i raise this boy for Jesus Christ. God, if you'll help me, I'll love you as much when my little girl is 15 as I do when she's 5. I'll be as dedicated to you when my, when my daughter's 16 as I am when she's 6. Not everybody's held to that. We ought to say, Lord willing, Lord willing, I'll do such and such a thing. Now, it's, it's much better to plan to do the right thing than it is planned to the wrong thing. It's much better to set out on the narrow road than it is to wander off into the broad road. But even in the right path, with the right intent, and the right heart, you ought to say, I ought to say, Lord willing. Lord willing, I'll do this. Lord willing, I'll do that. Look at your passage again. Verse 13, Go to now ye that say today. You don't even know what's going to happen before the end of this day. Or tomorrow, you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. We will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. You, you might last a year, you might not. You might buy and you might be broke. You might sell and you might not find a taker. You don't know what's going to happen this year. Verse 14, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? Well, I'm a carpenter. Well, I'm a truck driver. Well, I'm a school teacher. Well, I'm a, I'm a manufacturer. Well, I'm a, I'm a salesman. Well, I'm a, I'm a pastor. Well, I, well, that's not your life. That's what you do in your life. Well, I'm a rich man. I'm a poor man. I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. That's not your life. 
Those are some of the circumstances and details of your life. What is your life? Here's what God said it is. It is even a vapor. You can't hold a vapor. You can't put it in a jar. You can't put it in a box. You can't refrigerate it. You can't store it in a Tupperware. You cannot lay hold upon a vapor. It's there. It's gone. It's here. It's not here. It, it appears. It vanishes. That's what God said. Your life is not permanent. Your life cannot be grasped. It cannot be held on to. You get where I am now, you, you'll do what everybody does. It's my age. you got a box of photographs somewhere. I love my children as much now as I did when they were just learning to walk. But I miss when they were just learning to walk. And I, I love... All, I'm so happy about all things God's done through the life of our church. But you get looking through those photo albums, and there's, there's Jesse and Abnett, he's in heaven. And there's Jim Smart, he's in heaven. There's, there's Jim Penny Walton, they're in heaven. There's Pearl McDonald, she's in heaven. There's Jan Maude, she's in heaven. And, and it's a joy to be here. But it's never like it was. One day's never like another day. One year's never like another day. Then you look at those pictures, all those old youth activities, and then you say, well, he's a drunk, she's a drunk, he's living adultery, she's living adultery. Break your heart. Break your heart. Some of them youth pastors, some of them preacher's wives, some of them missionaries, some of them faithful and true to the church house, but not all of them. Not as many as should be. Not everyone had the opportunity to be. And I'm telling you, you didn't know. You didn't know. When that year dawned, how many, those, how many people get saved that year? How many people fall away that year? How many people sell out to Jesus Christ that year? How many people mess up their lives that year? And this year is no different. But I'll tell you one thing. If, if last December was the greatest month of your life, you can't grab it now. If 2015 was the best year of your life, you can't get your fingers around it now. It's gone. It's a vapor. So you know what you got? You got this afternoon. You get up tomorrow. You know what you got? You got tomorrow. I didn't say don't plan. I didn't say don't plan. So you know, young man here, you'd like to be married someday. Well, you better get yourself a good job. And you better figure out how to manage money. And you better figure out how to live, a, live a, a right life and a proper life so you can take the lead and set the example. But you don't know you're going to live long enough to get married. And you don't know if she's going to say yes. Amen. Amen. You understand what we're saying? Young lady, you, 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 you want to serve God one day and, and, and you say, I'm going to do this and do this and keep myself from this and keep myself from that. And that's great. That's wonderful. You ought to plan that way. But you don't know if you've got another two years on this earth. You know what he said? We ought to say, Lord willing, when you get up this morning, what is God's will? That's more important than your plans. What is God's will? That's more important than a year from now. What is God's will? That's more important than your upcoming summer vacation or your fall retirement. What does God want you to do today? That's all you really have any say over. That's all you ever really have any certainty about. I am going to get up Sunday morning and get my Bible and go to church because that's what God wants me to do. I hope you get to retire. I hope when you retire you get to travel. I hope you get to meet the man or the woman of your dreams and live happily ever after. I hope you get to put away money in the bank. I hope you stay, stay in good health. I hope all that exercise and eating right. I hope it all pays off. Here's all I know. Are you going to be here tonight? Because that you have some control over. Today. Today. That's all, you, that's all you got. And the Lord said, what we ought to be concerned about, planning, okay. Looking ahead to the future, nothing wrong with that. Laying out a right course for our life, for our family, for our career, for our finances. That's all in the Bible. But if you, get, if you put all that down and then you don't say, Lord willing. I'm going to do today what God wants me to do. You're living like a fool. 
the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Your plans for college don't include God. Your plans for a career don't include God. Your plans for a family don't include God. Your plans for retirement don't include God. Your plans for death don't include God. You're living like a fool. This world's full of fools. Don't be one of them. Bible says here in verse 14, Whereas you know not what should be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time. A little time. A little time. Sure is a blessing. My mother gets up in the morning, cooks her own meals, dresses herself, gets in the car, drives herself to church. Ninety years old. That's a long time, you say. That's a long time. That's not a long time compared to The life of this earth, it's not a long time compared to God, it's not a long time compared to heaven, not a long time compared to hell. Ninety years down here looking looking horizontally, that's a long time. Look up, look up to God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. By Him were all things made. Without Him is not anything made. Get out, get back there before God said, let there be light. Get that back there before He said, sun, moon, and stars. Your mind can't even take that in. An eternal, everlasting God. Now look ahead to the endless ages of eternity. When this present heaven and present earth have vanished away. And God makes a new heaven, new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And in the endless ages to come, eternity upon eternity upon eternity, you'll be in heaven or in a lake of fire. You can't even, you can't even wrap your mind around that. You know what the Lord said? It appeareth for a little time. Just like that, for a little time. Some of y'all do reunions and things. And some of you look people up on the Facebook and all, all that all that sort of stuff. Here's what's troubling. When you look at a picture of somebody you haven't seen in 30 years, it's not that you say, wow, look what happened to them. It's that you have to realize that's what they're saying when they look at you. (laughs) See, you're used to seeing you because you've seen it day by day kind of work its way to where it is. But somebody that hadn't seen you since high school... You got to wear a name tag. And you know what? Right now, sir, if you got up this morning and you looked in that mirror and you said, yep, that's, that's about as, that's about as good as it gets right there. Enjoy that glimpse. Cause it ain't going to last. It's not going to last. Ladies, ladies, when he finally gets out from front of the mirror and you get to park there, when you've done all you can do, I, I, hope, I hope everything came out great. I hope the hair worked just fine the way you want it to. Atmospheric conditions came together with the with the, uh, the all the you know stuff you wash your hair with. It all just came out just right, and and you look say, "Well, praise the Lord." I hope you this morning. I hope you said, "Praise the Lord." I'm looking pretty good today. Enjoy it. Take a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> they will. <laughs> Frame it. I got a picture of my kids right now in my wallet. It's about 15 years old. Because I, I, I miss when they were right there. It was, it was about the last year I could still tell them what to do. <laughs> I've got updates. You, you understand what we're saying? The best day of your life is a mountain peak. And then you've got to climb back down. The be- your best income year, you better sock some of it away. Because there's another side to that hill. Your best health. Thank God we hadn't been to the doctor all year. Well, <laughs> get an appointment calendar. You'll probably see one this year. I'm not, tr- I'm not trying to discourage you. What I'm saying is your life is a vapor. And the part you can see, if you look away and look back, it's not there anymore. You realize the kids are already bummed out because the toys they got a week ago didn't change their lives. And the ones they really like, they have to put them down and go back to school. Because 40% of our society is going to have to get a job one day. 
They're not going to get to play video games forever. The other 60% will take care of them, but that's, that's how, how that goes. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Your, your, man, remember, remember that little thing? That, you weren't walking yet, but they, they, our kids had one. It, they, we sat them in this thing, and it was a round thing. It had wheels on the bottom. It was a wheel within a wheel with eyes all around it. And, they, <laughs> and they'd kind of walk across the floor. And it's, oh, that's, that's so neat. Try putting them in one of those now. They don't fit. They'd be embarrassed. They don't want to get in it. And, and then, then they had the, the uh, I don't know, are these kids still allowed to have rocking horses? Do they have to wear a helmet when they ride a rocking horse and elbow pads and, and all that? I, man, I'm, I'm so glad I'm not growing up nowadays. And then there's a bike with training wheels, and then you take the training wheels off. And, and you know what? Those are, those are highlights in your life. But how quickly you outgrow them. Now, if you live long enough... One day your kids will put you in a thing with wheels on it and, and you can shuffle across the floor like you used to. And then that'll be gone. Isn't that right? No teeth, applesauce. End of the line, no teeth, applesauce. If we brought nothing in this world, it's certain we can carry nothing out. Man, you young guys on the team, and, and you can run so fast, and you can throw so much, and, and you throw so far, and, and you, you, get, you, know, uh, you can do all the jujitsu and the karate and all that stuff. Have fun. Have fun. Because one day you're going to go to the doctor, and he's going to say, did you ever do karate? Did you ever jump a bicycle off a rooftop? Did you ever? And you're going to say, yeah. He's, well, that's what's wrong with you. I said, doctor, man, they did all these MRIs. He said, man, your neck's all messed up. Both your shoulders are gone. Your back's all messed up. I said, what did I do? He said, 15 to 35. That's what he told me. So that's what you did. And now you've got to pay for it. So what did he say? Your life, it's, it's a vapor. You can't hold on to it. It appears for a little time, and then that part of your life vanishes away. That part of your life vanishes away. That part of your life vanishes away. Some of you right now, you think the most important thing in this world is high school. And three months after you graduate, that entire world is burned to the ground. It's gone. It's over. It's done. You can't go back. Well, nothing matters more than college. I'm going to join a sorority. I'm going to have a big time on campus. I'm going to, uh, okay, fine. And then, you, then you're going to get you, finish your last class, and you get out of here. Go, go. Well, can I hang around, live in the dorm? And it's, it's a, no, get out of here. It's over, it's done. And I'm telling you, every aspect of your life, it's just, it just clicking by 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 20, just gone. Just gone. 15, for that, for that. Because of that, because you know that's true. We ought to say, if the Lord will, we, we shall live. <laughs> and it's up to God. You won't even be alive tomorrow if God don't let you live. You won't be alive to see another fireworks show unless you live. You won't live to September to see the Christmas trees go back up and the Santa Claus has come back out. Now they put them up right after Labor Day. It was after Thanksgiving, then it was after Halloween, now it's after Labor Day. Pretty soon they're going to have a 4th of July Christmas sale. <laughs> the way things are going. You ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Hey, this year, you want to do this? You better trust God. No, I want to do that. Okay, you better trust God. You want to go here? You better trust God. No, I want to go there. You better trust God. That's what he said. Whatever you're planning, and he's not against planning, don't leave God out of it. Well, you know, I met this boy. What'd God have to say about him? Well, I met this girl. What'd God have to say about her? Well, I'm considering this school. What does God say about it? Well, I'm thinking about taking this job. What does God say about it? Well, I, I, my family, we're considering moving to such such town. What does God say about it? People never consider God. Isn't that, isn't that something? Year ended, new year beginning. 
What are you going to do? Well, I'm planning this, I'm planning that. I made this resolution, I made that resolution. How many of them involve God? How many people said this year, I'm going to go to church more than I went last year? How many people said, I'm going to attend more services during the week than, than the one I've been attending? How many said, I, I'm going to actually care about the souls of people around the world that are going to hell, and I'm going to at least give God as much as I give the phone company? I'm going to at least give the Lord as much as I give Hollywood for cable TV. I'm going to at least give God as much as I spend on dog food. Wouldn't that be something? You know, if people, well, the, honey, the, the dog's out of food. Okay, and, and it's just automatic. We're going to go buy a $40 bag of dog food or a $15 bag of dog food, depending on what commercials influenced you the most. And a, and a missionary comes in and says, you know, we're going to this country, got 14 million people, and uh, there's no church in this city, and there's no church in that city. And how come the wife never says to the husband, honey, quick, we got to go get that missionary some help? We got to get cat food. We got to get dog food, but we don't got to get the gospel out to the world. What about if the Lord will? Yes. This this fellow he's sitting on this pastor. He got a phone call and he said uh, uh, he said hello. This uh, this is a Bible Baptist Church and the man said uh, uh, yeah I'm, I'm I'm Mr. Jones. I work for the IRS. He said did Mr. Smith give ten thousand dollars to your church? And the pastor said I got a feeling he's about to. <laughs> Now listen, we, you notice we didn't pass an offering plate this morning and we don't twist your arm for money or anything else. But how come you've got to get tires and you've got to get a new microphone and you've got to get this and you've got to get that, but you don't got to contribute anything to God or the work of God? It's not right. Lord will. Lord, listen, that money passed away as quick as your life does. You notice that? <laughs> it goes pretty fast. In fact, a lot of you, your next five years of income is already accounted for. <laughs> you couldn't even add up how long you've got to work to pay off the people you owe. Well, I couldn't afford to give to God. It appears to me you can't afford to go any longer without giving to God. Because the plan you've been on so far ain't working. Once you put God first and see if that don't work out better than putting MasterCard and Visa first. Well, you know, we're about to lose the house. Okay. Well, I don't think we could afford to give anything to God. You're about to lose the house because you never have given anything to God. Amen. That's good. That's the Happy New Year. Amen. What to say if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. God have any, God have any part in your scheduling? You got a calendar up on your wall? You got a day timer? You got a planner? God in there anywhere? Anything in there about God? Spring break, school's out, vacation, visit grandma, and every month the church puts out a bulletin. We're going to preach at this football game, we're going to witness at this activity, we're going to go to this car race. How come none of that ever gets on your calendar? How come God never has a part in any of those future plans? Just what he said. Verse 16, but now you rejoice in your boastings. I'm going to graduate this year. I'm going to get married this year. I'm going to get a raise this year. I'm going to change jobs this year. I'm going to retire this year. You know what we rejoice in? We rejoice in what we're going to do. And the Lord said, that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of evil, isn't it? Not, not, not sinful, evil. Evil meaning what? Have you not considered the consequences of living your life without God? Have you not considered the consequences of doing everything for you and having your chief advisor being you? How about asking the Lord? Lord, what's your will about this? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Now, here's what's real interesting. We quote this verse. I've heard this verse quoted all the time. To him that knoweth do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I've heard that verse quoted in all kinds of ways about all kinds of things. And always out of its context. Look at the verse. Therefore. Therefore. See, it's attached to the verses we've been reading. Is your life a vapor? Then you ought to do something good today. 
Is your life quickly passing? Then you ought to do something good right now. Are you, are you uncertain that you'll walk tomorrow? Are you uncertain that you'll be in your right mind tomorrow? Are you uncertain that you'll be alive tomorrow? Then you ought to do something good today. That's what he said. Well, you know, one of these days I'm going to quit that habit. How about today? One of these days I'm going to start doing something for Jesus. How about today? One of these days I'm going to forgive that person. How about today? One of these days I'm going to get involved in, how about today? One of these days I'm going to put God first in my finances and put God first in my time. How about today? Therefore, you know God wants you to serve Him. And you know this is the only day you're guaranteed. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good. And can we say it this way? And puts it off till tomorrow. Him that knoweth to do good and puts it off till circumstances are better. Him that knoweth to do good and puts it off until a more convenient hour. To him it is sin. You say, well, you know, when my kids are grown, I have more time to serve the Lord. You might not. You might be broken in your body by then. You might be broken in your, in your finances by then. Your kids might have caused you so much trouble by then you're mad at God. How about do it now? Well, you know, one day when I got more money and, and, and the economy is better, it might get worse. You know, it wasn't all that long ago some people went to the polls and said, anything's got to be better than George W. Bush. Well, how's that worked out for you? And you know what? The next one might be worse. You can't say, oh, I'm going to wait to serve God when I've got more time. This might be the most time you'll ever have in your life. I'm going to wait and serve God when I get feeling better. This might be the best you're ever going to feel. I'll wait and serve God and my family gets straightened out. Your family might go more crooked tomorrow than it is today. You don't know. I wish the best for you. I do. I, I mean, I wish the best for you. Hope is the best year of your life. Hope you never have to see a doctor one time. Okay, hope you never have to order health food stuff one time all year. Whatever, whatever it is you trust in, I hope you don't eat it all year long. I do. hope you don't get a sniffle, don't get a runny nose, not a one. I go to these churches. My, my wife, she's home sick this morning. We we'll go to church, and, uh, and uh, you know how they do, a lot of you do. They'll, they'll, they'll sing a song, Dan will get up and say, let's sing number 200, and they'll sing two verses, and they'll say, all right, now let's fellowship. And everybody goes around and shakes hands. And then they come back, sing the last verse, and then the pastor says, Now let's, let's pray. Uh, we got a lot of people here with the flu this morning, and a lot of people here with bronchitis. Then why are we shaking hands? Don't touch me. <laughs> I'm walking around like this, you know. <laughs> what to do? And then you'll see somebody. <coughs> <coughs> oh, hey, brother. Good to see you. It's not good to see you. (laughs) Holy kiss would be healthier. (laughs) Anyway, therefore, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good. Can we just say there's not a person here that knows all the Bible? Can we just say there's not a person here that knows everything pertaining to God's will? Can we, can we agree to that? Can we also say there's not a person here that can't think of one thing right now they know God has told them to do and they're not doing it yet? Well, when? If not now when you're healthy enough to be in church. If not now with your family sitting here with you. If not now with a room full of people that would encourage you. If not now when God's been so good to us When? Tomorrow after the heart attack? Tomorrow after the layoff? Tomorrow after the kid breaks your heart? I mean, when? If if not going to serve God now, when are you going to serve Him? So I don't have time. You got as much time as anybody else. 24 hours every single day. You got time. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You know what people say? You witness lost people. And they, and they say it, 
and you, you try to encourage saved people, and they say it. You say to lost man, you know, you need Jesus Christ, you're saved. You know, say, what? I never killed anybody. I, I never got drunk. I never, you know what they do? They tell you the things they haven't done. You say to a saved person, you know, you, you really ought to sell out and dedicate your life to the Lord. Well, I, I don't drink. I don't steal. You know what he said? We're not talking about the things you don't do that are sin. We're talking about the things you don't do that you're supposed to do. To him that knoweth to do good and doesn't do good, to him it is sin. You know something? We got a Bible reading chart. We put one out every year. Not that's not original. It's not rare. It's just what churches do. We put out a Bible reading chart. And an average reader in 15 to 20 minutes a day can read the entire Bible cover to cover in a year. 15 minutes a day. There is no reason that anyone with any rational person cannot read God's Word from cover to cover in a year. 15 minutes a day. Now, if you ask somebody, you know you ought to read the Bible? Oh, yeah, I ought to read the Bible. You know it's God's Word? Oh, yeah, it's God's Word. I believe the Bible. It's God's Word. But you can't wait to see what some vain, empty person has said about some stupid movie on a Facebook page. But we don't have time to read the Bible. Have you heard that new song? It's so cool. Have you seen the video? Oh, you ought to see what she's wearing. It is so cool. you got time to hear a harlot sing a song about how great it is to be a harlot, but you don't have time to read a chapter in God's Word. To him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Don't be in church when the doors are open. Well, I went next year. When? When you really need prayer? When? When you're in despair? Why not now? Why not now? I hope tomorrow, I hope, Lord willing, I hope tomorrow, we're going to get a bunch of stuff in the mail, send the gospel out all over the world. We've got hundreds and hundreds of books and Bibles and, and, and recordings of things getting ready to go to the Philippines. I hope we get those sent out. Just, just as soon as possible. And I plan on preaching tomorrow night in Inverness in a, in a camp meeting over there. I'm excited about that, looking forward to it. I'm, I'm thrilled about Bible school starting up again on, uh, on Sunday, uh, a, week from, uh, a week from tonight, and, and Bible conference. This is a highlight of the year, man. We're about two weeks away from Bible conference. And you know what? I could have a stroke tonight and not do any of that. Some drunk could hit me driving home this evening and I'd not walk again. You, you understand? I'm not, I'm not trying to be gloom and doom. I'm saying we keep planning to do something for God, but it never quite gets on today's calendar. We keep planning on fixing some things in our life and tighten up some things in our home and adjusting some things in our heart, but somehow... It always gets crowded out by, I don't know, a ball game or a shopping trip or a nap. Not that we're against naps. Those are. That's one of the things I used to preach against. <laughs> you understand what we're saying? Let's read it. Let's read it. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. That, that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. Can we not, can we not all say, that's true. That's true. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor. Is there one person here can relive 2015? There's not. Is there one person here can go back and undo the mistakes or re-enjoy the blessings and the victory? Not a one. Not a one. It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time 
and then vanisheth away. Think of how many calendars you've thrown in the garbage can. Why don't you keep them, put them up again? Why don't you do all those things a second time? Can't be done. Can't be done. For, for that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live. If the Lord will, we shall do this. If the Lord will, we shall do that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good. Can you think of one good thing you haven't started doing? Can you think of one right thing you've been putting off? Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. It's not sin to me to not meet your expectations. And it's not sin to you to not meet my expectations. But it's sin for every one of us not to do what we know God wants us to do. Is that fair? Go to now. Now. Not tomorrow. Not June. Not when the kids graduate. Not when you retire. Not when you have more money. Not when you feel better. Go to now. And do what you know to be right. Amen. Father, Father, bless your word to our hearts. May we be doers of the word, not hearers only. Help us in the invitation hour, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, number 439.